to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the Gospel of Christ. The Holy Spirit records, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 14. Welcome to our study of the home as God would have it. This series of lessons, we're looking at what God has to say concerning the Christian home, marriage, and how to have a better home relationship. The scripture says in Psalm 127 verses 1 through 3 that unless the Lord builds the home, they labor in vain who build it. And so establishing a godly home is paramount to the success of every person in the home. As always, we encourage you to visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com, where you can find a host of Bible study materials, not just on the home, but on a host of Bible study subjects from salvation to various books of the Bible. And these are all free of charge. We'd love for you to stop by and visit. You can watch these and download, or if you'd like, we can send you a free CD or DVD of any of our lessons online. As always, we want to encourage you to visit the Church of Christ in your area where you'll find people who love the Word of God and have a desire for lost souls. If you do have a Bible question that we might could help you with, please don't hesitate to contact us by either emailing us or our contact information given at the end of the lesson. Today's lesson deals with a very serious subject dating, engagement, and what God has to say about the marriage covenant. How should a Christian feel about dating? What does God say about the engagement period and what guidelines are given and what do we need to know about the marriage covenant for it to be successful? When we think about the subject of the Christian and dating, there are several things that are very important relative to this subject. In our last lesson, or in one of our lessons, we dealt with preparation for marriage, and this more deals with the idea of dating and how a Christian should behave and what principles ought to govern that situation. When we talk about dating, let's realize first and foremost that a Christian ought to look for a mate who is going to help them successfully seek first the kingdom of God. Choosing a Christian mate is a premier decision in putting God's church first in one's life. Think of the words of Matthew 6, Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. If the aim of every child of God is to seek first the kingdom, then in dating, in choosing a mate, in who we marry, the kingdom has to be first, even in those decisions. Paul said in Philippians 1 verse 21, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die, that's gain. If living is for Christ, if the kingdom is first, if, as Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, we're to deny self, take up our cross, and follow Jesus every day, then who I date, who I hang around with, who I marry, the kingdom has to dictate those decisions in every Christian's life. And so make it a premier fact. Make it a, a top decision to put the kingdom first in every facet of one's life. Then, as we think about the idea of dating and engagement and the marriage covenant, let's realize that if one of the main purposes of marriage 
is to help one another get to heaven. Husband and wife, marrying a non-Christian makes that purpose, and dating a non-Christian complicates that purpose greatly. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 18. God saw that it was not good for man to be alone. Thus He made a helper comparable to him. And we have the introduction of the home and marriage and, and the family. If God made woman and man to be a, a helper for one another, friend, how can you date or for that matter, engage to or marry someone who's not a Christian and still be that helpmate that God designed. Can you date a non-Christian? Can you be engaged to a non-Christian? Can you marry a non-Christian and that person really be the helper in every way that God intended them to be? If one person's a child of the devil and one person is a Christian, there's going to be some struggles there along the way. One gospel preacher has rightly put it this way. He said, if you date or marry a non-Christian, you're going to have trouble with your father-in-law. If they're a child of the devil and you marry them and their interests are not God and Christ and putting the kingdom first, there are going to be problems along the way. And so please realize that it complicates matters greatly when you date, when you're engaged to, and ultimately when you marry somebody who is not a child of God. As we think about dating and engagement, let's realize that under the Old Testament, God's people were actually forbidden to marry those who were strangers or foreigners to the covenant of God. For example, listen to the words of Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. The scripture says, God speaking to Israel, Nor shall you make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. For they will turn your sons away from following me, to serve other gods, for the anger of the Lord will be aroused against you and, and destroy you suddenly. We understand that although under the old covenant and although speaking to Israel about not intermarrying with the heathen nations, remaining true to God in the covenant that God had given at Mount Sinai, there's a basic principle to be learned there. God doesn't want His people who have vowed themselves to His covenant, who are a part of His kingdom, to get caught up and mixed up with people who don't have the same values, morals, and who don't trust in God and the Bible as they do. And so the very basic principle is, under the Old Testament God condemned it, and friend, if we're to seek first the kingdom of God, and marrying or dating or being engaged to someone who's not a member of that church, is only going to pull you away, may actually weaken you rather than strengthen you, why would you date someone who doesn't have the same faith or principle that you do as a child of God? You know, when we think about this idea of dating and the engagement and the marriage covenant, as we think about that priority, seeking first the kingdom, Let's use an Old Testament example. Uh, someone may say, well, you know, I've got a faith that can withstand that. I can date a non-Christian. I can be engaged to. I can even marry a non-Christian, and I might could win them to the Lord. My faith is strong enough that rather than drag me down, I can bring them up. Friend, there's no doubt that you may actually win them to the Lord, but that's not the type of evangelism we encourage because there's just as much chance that they could pull you away from the Lord. Let me give you a Bible example. Solomon was a great man of God, ended up building the temple, did great things on behalf of God. In fact, he was given wisdom from on high, from God Himself. And yet, in 1 Kings chapter 11, about verses 1 through 12, you will find that Solomon had married many wives, uh, ungodly wives of the foreigners God had commanded them not to marry, and those ungodly wives and their false religions led Solomon away from God. 
great man of God, did great things, had a great faith, had wisdom from on high, and yet was pulled away, was lured away by his false wives, by his ungodly wives, and their false religions. And so let's not say to ourselves, this might be a form of evangelism, or I've got a faith strong enough to hold it. That's not the attitude the Christian needs. Why would you want to enter into a relationship where you're going to have to maybe drag or pull the other person to the point where they need to be as far as spiritual matters are concerned. Here's what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 14. The Scripture says this, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now this may be dealing with a variety of different scenarios where one could be unequally yoked together. Could be business relationship, could be friendships, but friend, the bond of marriage could surely be an application of that as well. Don't be unequally yoked or bound together with an unbeliever. Well, what's an unequal yoke? Let's say you've got the picture here is of two oxen, two mules, maybe two animals that are working in the field, and you've got a yoke and one animal hooked to each side and maybe some kind of wagon or farm equipment hooked to the back. And, and if these animals are not equally yoked, that is, one's a lot stronger than the other, one's going to end up doing all the work, the other one's not going to do as much, and it's going to be very difficult on that one person. Well, what's the idea spiritually? Don't enter into relationships, business ventures, and surely enter into marriage with someone who is not equally yoked together in the sense that they're a member of the one church. They believe in the Bible as the Word of God. They believe in God's plan of salvation. They have a desire to raise godly children. Their morals and values are the same as yours. Now, think about this. Although the Apostle Paul mentions as a right himself having the privilege and the power to, to marry a believing wife, a wife, he mentions though that that wife is to be a believing wife. And so Paul mentions he had that right. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, the widow is to only remarry in the Lord, Christian, someone who is a candidate to remarry or to marry. And so from the language you see in the Bible, one thing is for sure, you ought to marry a Christian, not just a Christian, but a faithful Christian who will help you. Listen very carefully. If you ultimately marry the person you date, then friend, you ought to date a Christian who is going to help you get to heaven and be the godly person that you desire to be. Now, let's think about it statistically for a second. A study has been done of young people People who enter into marriage, some were Christian, non-Christian marriages, and some were both Christians. And I, I want you to listen to the statistics that occur in each of these scenarios. Of 79 people, 79 couples, who were in a mixed marriage between a Christian and a non-Christian, here's what happens statistically. Of those 79, 57 left the Lord's church. 22 remain faithful Christians. Fourteen, only fourteen, converted their mate, and of those seventy-nine, twenty-five ended up getting divorced. Now, contrast that with another group who married Christians, both were Christians. Of sixty-four total, who both Christians married faithful Christians, only five left the church. Fifty-nine remained faithful Christians, and only two were divorced. Do you see how much greater one's chances are if both spouses believe they ought to be seeking first the kingdom, not being self-serving, but serving the other person and trying to glorify and help one another get to heaven in every way? You know, as we think about the idea of dating especially, what exactly is dating. Well, dating is a sense of getting to know a person, 
may consist of social activities done by two people with the aim, and it does have an aim, with the aim of looking at the other person's suitability as, as a mate in a relationship for a husband and wife. And so when we talk about dating, it isn't just all fun and games. There is the sense of the social activity, but I need to be thinking about, is this person someone who will help me get to heaven? Are they a suitable mate that I can help in life and that will help me? And when we bring children into the relationship, will they indeed help our children? You know, some basic guidelines that revolve around dating. And parents, I hope you'll listen, hope you'll listen real carefully. As it relates to dating, parents, you are in charge of dating. They are in your house. They are still a minor. You are still their parent. Ephesians 6 verses 1 through 4, the Bible says children are to obey their parents in the Lord. Just because a boy or a girl may have some attraction to an individual and wants to date them does not mean that is a given. Parents, you're in charge of who they date. At this point, you have the say-so in who they date. You can say no, you're not allowed to date that person for these reasons. Uh, you're allowed to make decisions on when they date. I believe too many times young people start dating way too early, way before they're ready to begin thinking about that seriously. And parents, you're in charge of the curfews and the boundaries that relate to dating. When will you be back? When will you leave? Who will take you? What will you do? Those are all questions that you absolutely have the right to ask. You are not violating anybody's privacy. You are not overstepping a boundary. You are not taking away anybody's individuality. If you set guidelines, if you stick to those guidelines, and if you determine the who and the when and the how of dating for your children. Parents, as it relates to us being in charge, you need to explain the purpose of dating to your child. Dating is not just so you can go out and have fun, and there's more to it than just that. Children need to be taught that in dating someone, in dating someone of the opposite sex, you're beginning to think about, do I want to spend my life with this person? Genesis 2.18, will this person be a good helpmate for me in life? You need to do your research. How does this person act? Are they responsible? How do they dress? What type of people are they associating with? 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 says, evil companions corrupt good morals. Is this person respectful to you as a parent? Do they respect your son or daughter? Are they responsible enough that you're going to send one of your most valuable possessions, your children, out with them? Do they dress modestly? Do they have good Christian values? Are they hanging around with type of friends that you would want your child hanging around with? You definitely need to sit down and get to know the person before you just send your child out with them. There may be things that you're not aware of until you do get to know them, either good or bad things there. And then we want to mention some rules for young people as it relates to the actual dating process. First, as a young person who's dating, we encourage you, as Solomon, the writer of Ecclesiastes said, remember your Creator in the days of your youth. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 9 and 10, and Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse number 1. One day, you will have to answer for your conduct. You need to realize that when you're dating, God is indeed watching at it all times. God knows and sees all, whether it's at the movies, whether it's at the table when you're eating out, whether it's in the car when there's no one there but you and the other person. God knows and sees all. And you need to be encouraged to even during this time, when there may be emotions that run high, when there may be attractions, 
Don't forget your Creator. In the days of your youth, remember Him and always strive to do those things which will please Him. And then we encourage this. As a rule for dating, don't use the same standard that the world does in dating. 1 John 2 Verses 15 through 17, the Bible says, Do not love the world or the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, it's not of the Father, it's of the evil one. And the world and all that is in it is passing away. But he who does the will of God, the Father, shall endure. Christians need to know that there is a difference between inner beauty and outer beauty. Do you remember Proverbs 31 verse 10? The scripture says, Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Only, listen carefully, don't date somebody who you wouldn't seriously consider as a spouse or that you're not even thinking about as a spouse. Don't let the world's standards be your standard for what you do during the dating process, the way you dress, the way you act, the way you talk. The world is in opposition to the principles of God. Let God's standards be the rules that govern you. Another rule for dating, if parents are in charge, young people, you must realize your parents are indeed in charge. Even if you're a young adult, they're still your, your parent and you should respect them. Children are to obey their parents in the Lord. If you're under their roof, whatever, they are, whatever rules they set are it. They get to put the rules in place. Your responsibility is to follow those rules and to abide by them. You may say, well, that's not what I think's fair. In all honesty, they're your parent, you're in their home, you don't get to set the rules. Your parents do. They get to decide the who of whom you date. They get to decide when you date. They get to decide where you go and what time you've got to come home. Your responsibility as a young person is to respect and obey your parents and to recognize the wisdom they've got in setting these rules. Then, as a young person who would be dating, Paul's encouragement and Peter's encouragement, flee fornication, is such an important rule for dating. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and 1 Peter 2 verse 21, the scripture says, flee fornication and abstain from fleshly lust, which wars against the soul. As a young person, there are indeed emotions, there are feelings, there are attractions, there are desires. There's no doubt about that. But where is the proper place for that? Marriage is honorable. The bed, undefiled. Whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Hebrews 13, verse number 4. And so, what kind of advice can we give based on that? Don't put yourself in a compromising situation. There's no need for a child of God, for a Christian who's trying to put the kingdom first, to be in a situation alone where something could happen, where things could get elevated, where emotions could run wild. And because of that, you make decisions that weren't based off of fact or truth or God's Word, but rather off of emotion. And so don't put yourself in a compromising situation. Don't let the lust of the flesh be what guides you in these situations. Then we also mention as a guideline for dating that a young person must prove themselves responsible and treat others with respect to be granted permission to date. Are you responsible enough to date? Do you make good decisions? Are, are you able to be given the keys to the car and expected to come back realizing that you're responsible enough to do that? Would someone's father or mother want to send their child out with you knowing that they'll be safe, that things will be handled rightly, that you'll treat them with respect, that you will act and talk in such a way that will show your respect for that person? You see, my friend, we are created in the image of God. Genesis 1, verses 26 through 28. As a creation of God, we ought to respect not only ourselves, 
but others as well, and show that respect indeed by our actions. Then as we think about dating and engagement in the marriage covenant, let's realize that the marriage covenant is such a serious covenant. God says in Malachi chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, that when He speaks of divorce inside the marriage covenant, He speaks of it as a violent action. Proverbs chapter 2, verse number 17, speaks of the uh, adulterous woman as one who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. What we want to express is the seriousness of dating, of engagement, and marriage. This is not a, a flippant matter. Why are there so many divorces today? Why are there so many broken homes? Why are there so many young people who thought everything was going to be grand and glorious and it would just be so smooth in marriage and come to find out it was very difficult and may have even ended in divorce? One reason may be we didn't take dating, the engagement period, and marriage as seriously as we ought to. Is it wonderful to date a Christian? You bet it is. Is it great to be engaged to and looking forward to and being married to a child of God? Oh, it absolutely ought to be. As Genesis 2.24 says, for this reason, man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall be one flesh. How wonderful and joyous that relationship ought to be. But friend, you must enter into it with a sense of seriousness. When you start dating, start to look for somebody who will be a good helper for you in this life. As you're engaged to someone, if there are red flags, if there are problems, don't proceed with a marriage at least until you've worked them out. And friend, above all, and I hope you'll listen real carefully, don't date, get engaged to, or marry someone who is going to pull you down spiritually, who's not a child of God, and who won't actually help you get to heaven. Our hope and our aim in giving these lessons is that each one of us can strive to be the helper we ought to, to help one another truly get to heaven. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.